YouTube Nation, my people from all over, welcome back to the show. For everybody who's first time tuning in, please like, share, subscribe. What it do, y'all, on this Friday morning, man? I'm just sitting up here drinking some coffee. Want to holler at y'all right quick. See the balloons back there? That's one of my granddaughters, the one who stayed with me. She just turned nine last week, so we had a little function for her last week. She still got balloons around. You know how kids like to keep that stuff around, but it's a beautiful thing, man. Just being able to spend those moments with your loved ones. It's always important, man, much as you can, when you can, for those loved ones that you still get along with. I mean, I get it. Like, we, we all in families. We all don't. We all ain't like this. You know what I mean? Rather be parents, father, son, father, daughter, whatever. Father, brother, brother, cousin, whoever. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us don't get along like that. And that's the same in the community. You know what I mean? In the community, we all don't get along. We still try to deal with each other we supposed to some of us do some of us don't deal with each other at all but that's just what it is everybody you know you know whatever works for you you just some people just don't want to be around no more man some people's energy is just not there it just don't match yours the vibrations are off so you don't want to even deal with some cats i'm like that there's some people i'm just like i'm just like i, I ain't got nothing bad to say about but i'm just like well you know we just don't mix bro we just don't we don't connect man it don't matter what we ain't had no issues with each other, nothing like that. It's just it's two different vibrations. And you gotta understand that in life. You understand some people just does not meet, does not equal you, does, does not equal your vibration, should not be this on the same level as you get it's not compatible to even just function with you. You can function better with certain people on certain levels, whenever. You know what I mean? It's just so whoever you get along with, basically, you know what I mean? Whoever you get along with, whoever you vibe with, that's that's just life. So it's like that in the family. It's like that in the hood. It's like that everywhere. We just, just because we family don't mean we're going to get along. Just because we all from Raymond don't mean we're going to get along. It's like, it's just, it's because you all bloods or you all a crip, wherever you from. Just because y'all are that doesn't mean you automatically going to get along. It doesn't mean you're going to automatically be tight with each other. People got that misconception. People tend to think just because we from the same hood or just because we black, just because you Hispanic, you Tongan, you white, you Asian, whatever, you're going to all get along just because you're under that same race. Negative. You know what I mean? We are not going to all get along just because. The, the fact is, we don't all match up. We're not all compatible with each other. It's just That's just the reality of life. Wherever you're from, wherever you're at, whatever country you're in. Shout out to everybody out there tuned in. Let me say shout out to the homie Low Mac. Big Low Mac salute. Big homie. Shout out to Baby Crip, Mac. Welcome home, home boy. Welcome home. Stay doing your thing. Stay focused. I see you. All right, so <clears throat> this story take place back in the mid-80s. Bob Big Boy on the corner of Century and Hearthon. Hearthon is also known as La Brea. When you're going north of Century, it's considered La Brea. On the south side, it's considered Hartham. Going into the Lenox side. But it's all the same street. So, back in the days, and still to this day, the homies was around there. Homies being in restaurants up and down Century. It'd be, rather be Ramens, Tongans, it'd be Legends. You know, you got a lot of crispy in these little areas around here up and down Century. So back then, the Bob Big Boys is gone now. But back then, the Bob Big Boys around the corner of Century and uh, Century Heart Time. So we go up there one day, me and the homies, we push up to get something. It might have been like four or five of us. As soon as we go inside, man, we just, <laughs> right away, what we notice, red. It's just like a motherfucking bull. You know, you just notice red, it's like charge. You just feel like, get them, take off. You know what I mean? Just on sight. It was just like, boom, go. And they the same way. They see blue, boom, go. So that's how it is. So we go up in here, and who we see? <laughs> two bloods in here with two females. Like they was on a little date or whatever. They was having something to eat or whatever. I don't know. It's it's like like noon time, sometime midday, it was nighttime, shit like that. Uh, but we recognize who it is. It's the same dude I told y'all about another story. I think dude name was Shelby. Shelton Shelby is like that for Crenshaw Mafia. And he's with this other dude, this tall dude. I never knew who he was, but I just seen him a couple of times, you know what I mean? And, it, you know, you see certain people back when you out here banging and shit, you just see them all the time. You riding through niggas' hood. You see them, 
And it's like, okay, they're going to get him one day. You know what I mean? Because he'd be out here too much. And But I used to always see this dude, like we'd be going down Century. Anytime, anywhere down Century, you get to like uh, Woolworth, where the mafias be at, going to the bottoms. It's, that's this little dairy thing, right? The little white dairy, like on the corner, like dairy gas station they used to be at. And I see this dude out there, and dude would be out there with a red hat on, red on. And nigga always had his hat like to the right, like something like this. And he's slim dude, but he was like super blood. He used to be out there like, you know, just posted. Yeah, you know, he was or just walking like, you know, like nigga just <laughs> nigga be standing like, you know, like, like posted up. And like, look at that nigga. You know what I'm saying? You just see him going down the century. So here it is. We run across this dude and Bob Big Boys with the dude Shelby. How was knowing him? Because soon, soon we go through the door and look. They got the security dude right there. So when we walk through the door and we finna go and buy big boys, get seated for tables and shit. We noticed the niggas over there. And dude seen us. And the, the tall dude with the hat like that, he the first one to get up. <laughs> he got up like, look, like, you know, pretty much like blood. Look at these niggas. That's how he kind of, you know, that kind of look. And he was like, you know, on, on defense mode. So we would be like, nigga, fuck. Woo, 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 woo. It just went up, bro. But 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 here it is though. First, soon we walked up in there, the homie Big Eight Ounce. Big Eight Ounce was a short cat. He seen Shelby. He knew him. I think they was in Hawaii together back in the day. I think they was in Paso or something together. Both of the eight ounces knew him. So we go up in there and like, you know, niggas start, you know, right away, like dissing them niggas. And they like kind of like, you know, got in defense mode. And before we could even get to them niggas, them niggas was up with chairs. <laughs> first the tall nigga grabbed a chair first, and the other nigga had the chair. Shelby grabbed a chair. The girls was right there behind them, like kind of covering up, whatever. And we go up like, nigga, fuck you niggas woo, 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 with the chairs. So now we in Bob Big Boy. They this, and we throwing chairs at each other, slanging. Niggas is having chair fights in this motherfucker. We grabbing glasses and shelf the table, throwing at these niggas in here. It just it just went up to the security motherfucker run up in there like with the everybody get out of here, welcome police coming. So he called the police coming, people screaming, running on up out of that by big boys. We throwing glasses and all kind of shit, these niggas. Only thing stopped us from really getting actual physical contact was the chairs. Cause as soon as they seen us, they like I say, went in defense and we went and nobody wanted to be the first one to run up on a chair and they got here slanging chairs and shit like that. I'm not gonna put no extras on it and go and say, yeah, we, we did them niggas wrong and they hell no, nah, I'm not gonna I'm not that dude lying my stories, bro. I don't, I don't do that shit. I just keep it 100, bro. Niggas this side went down. Niggas was up in there slanging chairs, throwing chairs, battling chairs like this until the security ran in there with Ingrid Pody start coming. We broke up out that motherfucker and we gone and that was that, you know what I mean? But <laughs> it was crazy, man, because these dudes, I never understand when people going to go out on a date, you don't take a girl out, bro. Don't, don't take her out, be all banged out, homie. You don't go somewhere, man. And I never take dates nowhere locally like that, nowhere. I don't ever go to no shit like no motherfucking restaurant on Century. None of that shit. I'm finna go somewhere far out right where I can have a good time. That's the thing about it. If you want to go have a good time, man, go somewhere, go out, man. Put on something different. Don't be out there just like banged out, bro. Just because, you know, I mean, that, that was the culture. That's how we dress. And back in the 80s, that's like, that's the difference between now and then. Back in the 80s, niggas was banged out. You just be like, you know, you, you got your rag, you got your colors on, you going places. You was like every day. That's your everyday attire. That's your, your uniform every day. So you represented that, you know what I mean? But, you know, then we all, we recognize niggas got the belts and shit on. And, you know, for y'all don't know, no, back in the days, Bloods, Bloods was known for wearing their belt buckles in the back. So you, you see somebody with their belt on and the belt buckles in the back, that was Bloods. And then Crips, you know, is always to the left. It's a trip because I still wear my belt buckle. <laughs> I put my belt buckle to the left a lot. One thing is because that belt buckle, sometimes when you sitting down, be fucking with you right here, right? So I still rock my belt buckle to the left. That's just an old habit. I always been have my belt buckle to the left. I just still do that. It's just old habits, hard to break. But yeah, so you know, you know the you know the tire. You know what the tail like. This niggas is bloods. But them niggas had on all red. Them niggas was what the one dude was. He was flamed up. I think dude Shelby, the other nigga had some money. So he was a nigga more like you know the older homie with the bread. And he was dressed a little more little little more spiffy with it. You know what I mean? He was more into the you know the. The shit niggas was wearing the dope dealer feet or out and all that old type of shit. But the niggas had red on, you know what I mean? But the other nigga, super blood, you know, he had the red hat on and all that red shirt. So he was up in there like, fuck it. And you right here, Bob Big Boy. He's like, nigga, what you niggas doing on this side? Nigga, you know what I'm saying? And we went up in there like, fuck you niggas. And they were like, fuck you niggas. And it just went down. Niggas was throwing chairs and dishes and shit, <laughs> dishes and shit at each other. Just went up like that to the security ran and ran us up out that motherfucker. But like I said, man, and Inglewood, I'm from Inglewood, bro. 
straight up. I'm raised in Inglewood. I've been in Inglewood before we was Raymond's in Inglewood just as a kid. And I knew a lot of these dudes because, like I said, I played baseball, Rogers Park, played Lennox Little League. I didn't did all that shit over there. Darby Park, my little brother, Baby Nug, used to be T-ball at Darby Park. Into Darby Park dances. I went to Center Park Elementary, which is worth the thing. I think they closing that down now. But all that shit, I'm from Inglewood, bro. And I didn't have many encounters with Inglewood Bloods on many occasions because they all over the place. You know what I mean? And we got that patch right there. That's that corner where the Crips sat at South Inglewood. And they ride through. And we ride through. You go to different places, it just happened like that. Especially back in the 80s. You know what I mean? When you can you can obviously tell where somebody was from because the colors you were. It always went down there. It always went down the Inglewood Police Station. Shit is still active over that way. But it's different because you don't know who because the color lines has changed. Niggas wearing different color clothes and different shit like that. But we ran across them dudes there. That was a little melee. We didn't have, I didn't have incidents with bloods and norms. Yeah, it's another story I'll share with y'all another time. All around there. Fat burgers and us right there on, on the corner across the street with a beef bowl at. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just a lot of shit that going around there. You know what I mean? It's just, that's just how it is. But that situation took place back in the mid 80s. And it's, it's, it's funny just looking back at it now. Like, now we was up in there throwing chairs at each other. Might have been four or five crips in there and like two bloods and two females. And people would think it's more y'all right out in Doodle. See, that go back to the story I told y'all about me and Nug, the situation that happened over in the 60s. Shit happens, man. You just, you just, it just go down like that sometimes. You don't always get the best of motherfuckers just because you got more numbers. It don't always go down like that. And then you get into it, you don't always just really have contact. Sometimes you, you niggas just throwing chairs at each other. You just, sometimes you don't really get a chance to really, because niggas see you coming, niggas get up and be ready. And that was the case. Them niggas jumped up and like, boom, with the chairs, grab the chairs. Like, what's up, blood? Get the, you know, they, them niggas was ready. Like, had to, had to defend themselves because they didn't. We was just going to pack the niggas out in there. It would have been all bad. Nobody had no strap inside that motherfucker. But it's silverware. It's knives and shit on tables. So you got to be careful when you fighting inside of a restaurant. Because you're right. They're going to just run up on a nigga and they grab that motherfucking butter knife. And get ha, 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 ha. You, you don't know. You know what I mean? But shit happens. This is gang culture. This is the shit we deal with. This is the shit we grew up in. We run across each other. To this day, people still running across each other. Enemies pull up in the wrong spot and see these niggas. It goes down. You know what I mean? But I can say this, though, man, things have changed because nowadays people do give a lot more respect. Back in the 80s, we didn't have no respect. A lot of, there's a lot of respect being shown now, and I appreciate that. I, and I, I salute everybody who's giving respect on both sides, man, because, you know, our generation was, 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 was a motherfucker, man. The 80s, banging in the 80s was, was a motherfucker, bro. Everybody know that, man. It, 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 was, it was just no understanding. Whole lot of understanding now. No understanding. And I'm going to give a shout out to the bike clubs too, bro. Because the bike clubs got... I respect the bike clubs because they got so many members together, man. They they unify and they coexist and it's cool. The, the bike scene is cool, man, because they bringing people together, man. But it's cool when we go back. We can go back and look back at these situations we done been in, how we done survived them. And when you can tell a story without being disrespectful. I don't, I'm not disrespecting no uh, bloods, none of that. Or no crips, none of that. I just shared my experiences with these dudes from different hoods, how it went down. Uh, I can't share everything. I won't. I, I'm not. You know what I mean? It's, just, it's a lot of shit that happened. I won't say. A lot of shit that happened to me, I won't say, because I don't, I don't participate in no kind of telling and none of that. I don't put nothing out there like that. And a lot of things we didn't been involved in, you know, that's just, that's just gang banging, bro. You, you, you live the life, homie. Expect it. If, if you're banging, expect activities, period. Expect activities if you're game banging. Do not be game banging and don't expect no activities. And don't be out here, be an active game member and taking somebody's daughter to a motherfucking restaurant in the hood, in any hood, bro. Fuck all that. Don't do that. You know what I mean? Don't take her to Roscoe's or Maine and Manchester. Don't go over there. Like, don't take a date over there. You banging. Nigga, don't think you're going to pull up over there. Don't, none of these places, homie. A lot of these places, not Johnny Pastrami on that. A lot of these places, don't take females on dates to these places if you're banging and you be looking banged out. Don't do it. Just because you feel like, fuck it, I want to go over with baby because you know you might run across somebody. Somebody might pull up. Now, rather you be the guy with them or they get with you. It's a situation that, that needs to be avoided because you be over here, you sagging, looking all with your rag and all this old shit. Now, these dudes and pulled up to get something to eat too. Like, oh, look who we got over here. It goes down like that. You know what I mean? And you with baby. 
and you got to pull out your thumper. Now, you didn't thump or they didn't thump on you. Just avoid that, man. Go somewhere out, man. Take a trip. Ride, man. Go to a cool, neutral area and just stay neutral. Don't be out here in the, in, in, in the, in the suburbs somewhere like fucking Lakewood or some shit and trying to be out and look at bang the fuck out. Nah, man. You came out here to have a good time. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy your meal, man. Take baby, Look out for this woman. Take baby to somewhere nice. Because otherwise, you're just putting her life in danger when you're doing that shit. So niggas got to start thinking. It ain't we. That's, that's our selfish mentality, bro. That's the selfish behavior of us gang members. Because we go places and we got people that don't gang bang. And we looking like gang members. Nigga, switch up, bro. Don't do that. You putting their life in danger because they with you. Think, man. Think. Everybody's not like us. Everybody don't deserve to get the same treatment as us. Because you taking my daughter, my granddaughter somewhere, nigga, you put her in, in, in danger. I'm not going to do that. She ain't banging. If it's the homegirl from the hood or another hood, they active game member, it's a different story. But when you got somebody that's not from that life, rather eat even your uncles and cousins and shit like that. You be with moms and all that shit. I see niggas go places like, look at this nigga. He got his mama, his grandmama, somebody with him. And he looking like he just banged out. Like, nigga, that's stupid as fuck. Dumbass. Niggas recognize who this nigga. Some niggas don't care if you with your mom and them. Some niggas is just want to strike and going to do some stupid shit and just get off. Dumbass. Be wise, y'all. When you go out on a date, take your date somewhere nice, man. And dress up a little bit, man. Don't be out looking, up, like, looking all banged out. I, I get it, you young cats. You know that's what you want to do. But I can say this. Expect what comes with that. Active lifestyle. Shit happens. Y'all have a good day, man. Good weekend. Memorial Day weekend on this Friday. Y'all drive me on the car. Stay safe, man. Stay focused. Focus on the road. Always give thanks to God first. Be thankful to, if you've been around where I've been around, come from where I come from, or even before that, if you or even after that, wherever you at, wherever you at right now, man, always give thanks, bro, because you're here for a reason. We still here for a reason, man. To share these stories, to share some wisdom, to open people's eyes that never seen some of the stuff that we've seen. I'm, I'm speaking on all those YouTubers who putting out content about this culture and everything else. Because like I said, I watch a lot of different channels on different stuff, not just the gang culture. And I respect what people are putting out there because you drop, you, you take a time to make a video. You know, you that's work. You sharing your experiences respectfully. It's all love. Stay focused. Peace.